Okay, gonna continue with some more UEFI development here. I want to try to get the pointer protocols rounded out. So I did the simple pointer protocol and the mouse cursor drawing. I want to fix that up a little bit. And I also want to get the absolute pointer protocol working since I had somebody ask me to work on a touchscreen support. And I did find that I got that working as well. So I'm gonna go through that. So I also have to build that into OVMF to add the absolute pointer protocol. I will have that BIOS file added to the image creator repo, which is above here. Yeah, in there. <laughs> so I have the BIOS 64.bin. I, I built OVMF with the simple pointer protocol. I also have to add in the absolute pointer protocol. So I'll do that and add that to the repo. Um, Alpine Linux that I'm in, I don't have a way to build it. So I have to use like a different machine. So that's why I'm not recording it here, but I'll, I'll add that in. Um, other than that, I do want to fix some issues with the simple pointer protocol just right off the bat. It's not really great as far as the mouse testing. It's very sort of jumpy and stuttery here. And I found an, an easy way to fix that. And that's mainly using the right data types. So I did originally, when I started with the SPP here, I used floating point values, which is good. And then I changed the integers because you know, I, I don't think right when I try to talk at the same time. <laughs> so where I'm getting things, I'm going to change it to use floating point values when I move the cursor to the correct position. So in the input loop, and I'll change this to true so it makes slightly more sense. That's just a one in UEFI Boolean speak anyway. Where I have this commented out code here in the input loop, I was originally getting floating point values, and I'm going to switch to also use those here to make it more accurate. So I'm getting movement over resolution, and I'm getting sort of the total amount of movement for the simple pointer protocol when the mouse state is returned from a mouse input event. When you click a button or move the mouse, that returns an event, and it tells you how much it moved in terms of counts per millimeter, where one millimeter from the UEFI spec is defined as approximately 2% of the horizontal or vertical resolution. So 1920 by 1080, 2% 2 of 1920 would be the X movement per millimeter, well, in pixels, and 2% of 1080 would be the Y vertical movement in, uh, in millimeters or in pixels. So I'm, ju I'm just going to use floating point values for those and not worry about these integer values because we don't need them. We can make it a little bit simpler and fix up the movement a bit. So I'm just going to use floating point things here. This may look similar to intrinsics for SIMD stuff, for AVX or SSE, so my naming's not great. You know, XMM and YMM are registers, but I'm not using them here necessarily as registers, but as just general names for the amount of millimeters to use in the X or Y direction. So I just want to make sure that these are floating point values here. I guess you could also put an F, 1.0F as well, but that's fine. If they move a tiny bit, we want to move them a tiny bit, but the floating points, that would mean these have to change as well. These are integer references. But when I print them as an integer, I'll just cast them back to an integer, and that'll be all right. Then the millimeter, the amount to move, this is sort of in pixels, so maybe we'll say, I don't know, pixels or millimeter in pixels. That might make a little bit more sense here. So I'll just suffix that, and these I will also make floats because they are multiplied by 0.02, 2% of the resolution. I'm going to have that be floating point, and the only place I'm going to change that back to integer is here where I'm moving the position of the cursor. So now the xres millimeter and the xmm values are both floats. I name those float, and these are pixel now. These are both floating point values, but cursor x and y are integer values. I'm going to cast that to an integer, because I believe those are int ends. Originally defined, yeah, as the integer width of the machine. So I'll just cast those values here. Then the rest of this code will be fine. It'll draw just the same. This I can actually make slightly shorter, since this is going to be the same loop. And I'm just putting the frame buffer info into the save buffer, and then I'm changing the frame buffer info from the cursor buffer. Those can, all, those can be in the same loop. So that can also have a few less lines there. Also above here where I'm initially drawing the cursor, I can do that as well. So just make it a little bit shorter. In the initial position, that's still an integer 
integer values, that's okay. I think that's all I have to do for that. So I'll just check, make sure that the floating point code works a little bit better. There we go. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but it is, for me personally, a lot more accurate now. And it's not as jumpy, even if it moves a little bit. It's not as jumpy. You will see artifacting here now and then. Some little little lines and specs and things, and that's because I'm full screening the QEMU window and the scaling and everything's not perfect with that. So you will see some artifacting, but the cursor movement is a lot more accurate now. And I have a, a mouse that I can change the DPI values on the fly, so this is the lowest value. And the next one, and the next one. So it, it does report at least two QEMU through the, the event here that the, the increase in DPI or, or mouse movement is being reported. It's just hard to tell, you know, on, on camera. But that fixes up that movement, so it's actually accurate and not stuttery. And other than that, I want to add in the absolute pointer protocol, which I can do. I will have to get a BIOS that includes that, so I'll probably do that off camera, but I can at least write up the code here first and then do that and then test it. So I can add it in as a separate function, or I can just add it in within this function. I figure this is going to be a sort of test for all pointer devices, so I'll probably add it into here. So I'll say test mouse, uh, touch screen, and I don't know, I'll say various cursor slash pointer support. I'll say using simple pointer protocol and absolute pointer protocol, which is the APP, not just a, your old regular app but a different kind of app. And I'll do similar logic as, as I'm using to get the simple pointer protocol, but I'll be using the absolute pointer instead. So I'll have a, a GUI, a GUID value, a GUID value, and I'll have a protocol here. We already have num handles and handle buffer and other stuff, so probably just these values here. So APP protocol, I'll have an APP GUID, and that one there, instead of simple, it's gonna be absolute. And I'll do that because I have it in the spec that I'll bring over here. So the absolute pointer protocol. Put that in my header spec here. This is also available from console output. It's 12.7, but it's within the same console support, chapter 12 in the UEFI spec. So it's just below simple pointer protocol. That's, that's where I'm at here. So simple pointer protocol, I'll add in the absolute pointer protocol. This is meant for stuff such as touch screens and digitizers. And I do have a laptop that has a touch screen. I forgot it had a touch screen, but I tried touching it and it did work in the BIOS. <laughs> it moved the pointer. So I have a good setup on hardware to test both pointer protocols. So that's pretty nice. I like this sort of absolute pointer better than the simple pointer personally, because it's a little simpler. It has less going on. And instead of giving you accounts per millimeter movement, positive or negative, and whatever axis you're checking, it just gives you a number between zero and the max supported. So it just gives you an unsigned integer. You don't have to calculate like a delta of movement or anything. So that is pretty nice. I'm just gonna move that brace over here because my GUID is defined differently than theirs. And we can get the struct here as well. So let me look for the simple pointer protocol. I'm just going to put it after all of this stuff. Warm up the fingers here because I can't type too well so far. That's all right. This is at 12.7. 12.7.1 for this. That's fine. Absolute pointer protocol. Okay, so we have a reset, we have a get state, we have a wait for input and a mode. So it's similar to the simple pointer protocol. I'm assuming this was made afterwards, but it's pretty similar. If you know how the other one works, you know how this one works. It's pretty, pretty straightforward there. We'll have a mode with general info about the protocol. I'll exit that, and these will probably reference that. So I should type def it as itself. Except this, I'll do this. I'm just going to type def the thing as itself. Need to yank the word. 
Otherwise, we have circular dependencies, and then type def it as itself, but fill it out. Yeah, so we'll have a thing to reset. We'll get the current state with its values and XYZ, what have you, button state as well. We'll have an event we can use and an event queue to wait for input, and we'll have a mode giving the sort of maximum and minimum values for the X and Y and Z axes, as well as the button layout we have, if there is one. It's a little different because absolute has pressure sensitivity you can you can check for as well. So if you know you touch your screen with a pen or with a finger or something that, that applies pressure to the device for that point. And you can report that back through this, I think. Multi-touch would be something to look into. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if in the BIOS in the UEFI this spec, I'm I'm not sure if multi-touch is supported. I don't know how to check for it. I just know how to check if you touch a singular point. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, you can look into that if you will. I'm not sure it's it's available to be supported, though, unfortunately. But anyway, we'll put the mode here. So as opposed to the simple pointer protocol mode, which are integer values. No, they're uints as well. Okay, so we have a resolution for those. We have an absolute min and max for absolute pointer. So I guess a digitizer and a touchscreen sort of gives a full screen or, or some large rectangular region in which a point from the minimum to the maximum of that axis is going to be returned, or at least supported in this case. And I'd rather a pointer do this. I'd rather my mouse report, hey, I'm within this region that I support. That's, it's a little simpler in practice. We have a minimum and a maximum on X, Y, and Z. If they're both zero, it does not support, although... Like the simple pointer protocol in QEMU and on hardware, the first one that I find is sort of an invalid mode that just has a max of 65536 for these max values, and you'll see that. But according to the spec, they should both be zero if they're not supported. Then we have bits. These are attribute bits we can use. So I'll say attributes bit values. And these tell us whether it supports an alternate action or pressure as Z. So an alternate button input, which I don't really know what that means. It just says alternate button, <laughs> maybe for a pin device or something. And the support pressure as Z is when you do the get state function, it will return a Z value. And if this bit is set, then that Z value will not be a Z axis, but it'll be pressure data. I don't have anything that returns pressure data. My touchscreen on my laptop just says, you pressed a point. It doesn't say how hard you pressed that point. So I, I won't be able to show that, unfortunately. But it's there. You can reset, retrieve the state, retrieve capabilities. Okay. So we'll just type all this stuff out. And by that, I mean copy-paste because I'm a lazy person. So absolute pointer protocol reset or absolute pointer reset. And I will be using these reset functions because from talking with some people, other machines might need reset and some might not. My laptop doesn't need the reset necessarily to be, to be fired, to be ran for it to work, but other machines actually do need the reset function to fully set up the device, so to speak, at least at runtime sometimes. So sometimes it'll lock up the machine, but if you call reset first, it doesn't lock up. So I will be using this just for that. What is this, 12.7.2? But we'll see that in a bit. And we can call it with extended verification if we want. It'll take kind of half a second to one second, but can make sure things are absolutely set and working first. Twelve seven three. So in protocol out state and the state struct is here. This is a little bit different from the simple pointer state. Absolute pointer state. So the difference between these two is in the simple pointer state. We have a relative movement, which could be positive or negative, and the left to right mouse button can see if they are checked, if they've been pressed. 
In contrast, the absolute pointer protocol just gives you the current value in X, Y, and Z, which should be between zero and the absolute max, or rather, it should be between absolute min and absolute max. I haven't come across a situation where the min is not zero, so I'm going to assume it's going to be zero. Maybe that's not great. But it should definitely always be less than the max. And it'll tell you some button state in bits. I'll put these down as well. Say bit values. And this says if the touch sensor is active, if the touch sensor is active, or if the alt sensor, like a pin button, is active. And again, I don't have a way to test this. Now in QEMU, if you set to use the absolute pointer protocol, then the left button should be touch and the right button should be active, I think, when I call get state, that's correct. And both of them together would be ORed and it would make three instead of one or two. But on hardware, I, I can't get any of these to fire because I, I just have a touch screen and not any buttons. And that's all there is for absolute pointer. I should probably check error conditions as well. I might not because I'm lazy and a bad programmer. But that's all we need for those, so it's not too bad. So right now, just with these two definitions, I shouldn't have any mistakes when compiling, except I do. Because I called this simple pointer protocol. This needs to be absolute. And I redefined some things there at 81 and 77. Interesting. I'm going to move this spec off. Oh, because I copied this twice. Now, why did I do that? That should be simple. This should be absolute. Correct. Correct, Amundo. Uh, 4AE9, 9B. 4AE9, yep. And the other one's that. Okay, there we go. So I'm not using those variables, and nothing's going to change here. I can still use the mouse. But... All right, so how do we use how do we use this in practice? It'll be similar to the simple pointer protocol. I'm going to get all the things with the locate handle buffer. I'm going to get all the handles that support the APP and open them from there. So I'm just going to do it in a similar loop like I did for the simple pointer protocol. But I'm going to change things a little bit more for the simple pointer protocol as well. And instead of only getting one instance of both of these, I'm going to get arrays of both of these. And the reason that I'm doing this, let's say five, I haven't seen more than, you know, five mice plugged in at once, we'll say. But the reason I'm going to make these arrays instead of singular sort of instances is that you might want to check or test or use multiple pointer devices at once. So in my testing the other day, I had it to where you could set one of these one at a time as active, and that was just to check that they worked independently. But for this to be a little bit better, and because I was requested to do so, I was asked to do this, I'm going to have them work simultaneously. So you could use the touchpad, you could use a mouse that's plugged in, you could use the touchscreen all at the same time. So that's my goal with this as a, as a good input protocol test. So I'm going to do that, and the event loop that I get to check between, like down here, that I get to check between keyboard and other events, that'll change a little bit. So I'm doing a few changes at the same time, trying to think through it. But I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to make an enum. That'll say, we'll say input type. And I'll have one be like console input. I'll call CN. We'll have the simple pointer protocol and I'll have the absolute pointer protocol, we'll say. I'm not gonna use the numeric values, but I'll just have those be separate. This will be keyboard input. This is so I can separate out these things if I lump them all together and check for them when waiting for events later on. So a simple pointer protocol should be something like a mouse or a touchpad. And the absolute pointer protocol, which will be something like a touchscreen or digitizer, I guess would be like a, a Wacom tablet. That would be good to check with. QEMU says it has a way to check that. QEMU has a flag of dash, dash device, USB Wacom tablet. It also has USB tablet, but I haven't gotten that to really work for anything. Oh well. <laughs> but we'll see that in a bit. So if I have 
an enum type, I also want to make a struct that contains that. So this will look a little bit weird. I don't have a good way to name this. I guess we'll call it input protocols or something. I might name it something better later. But let's say we have we have a type. I need an event or I can just do a void pointer. We could say event though, EFI event. We'll say an event and that'll be like a wait event. Maybe we'll call it wait event. That makes more sense. This will be used in it's wait for event. And then I'm gonna have the type. So input type type. Let's say we can use either a simple pointer or an absolute pointer, and for the console input, this will just be null, and that's fine. So I'll have a union between those two things. So let's say we have a simple pointer protocol, a pointer to an instance of one of those, and since when you call open protocol, it, it needs a pointer, I'll just give it a pointer, and we'll have one for the absolute pointer protocol. And this will work because, at least on x86 here, the pointers are going to be the same size anyway. So I'll have, it could be one or the other. I think I need a semicolon. So this is an, an anonymous union, but that's fine. And I'll just have those three things there. Uh, let's say this is not plural, but the implementation may be. I'll say input, input protocols, and I don't know how many I need. If I, if I say I have a maximum of five of each of these, I guess I'll do something like that and do like 11. And since I know I can instantiate that to all zeros, I'll do that. So I don't like hard coding 11, but right now I'll just, I'll just leave it like that. So I'll say max of five SPP plus five APP plus one console input. And that's why I'm doing 11. So I'll say that, all right. What do I need to do with this? I'm going to fill out this array every time I find a valid input. So first I'm going to make it work for the simple pointer and the console input, and then I'll add in the absolute input after. I'm just changing things up a little bit, making it more generic. So when I get everything, I get the handles, that's still fine. When I locate all the handles and I open them up, if I found one and it's okay from testing with with other people, calling reset here is good to make sure that everything's actually reset on hardware. I'm going to reset the device for the simple pointer protocol, which is going to be in SPP. We can't do this anymore since it's an array, so I actually need the, the address of the offset within the simple pointer array here. Of course, I'm assuming handles is less than five as well. Not great, but... I want to fill out that member of the array. I want to reset, given that member of the array, since it's a pointer, yeah, I is the handle. Since it's a pointer, we can just offset that, dereference the pointer. I'll reset, given that, and if we want to do full verification, I can say true. This will make it take a little bit longer on hardware, like half a second, potentially, if there's a bunch of these. <laughs> but that's okay. It'll make sure it's all good to go. Then we want to print out the info. This will have to change, because these are now offsets into an array, as well as this. So if we determined, making sure that's all right, yeah, if we determined we have a valid mode here, I can still keep this. Instead of breaking, I'm just going to get all the modes because I'm adding them all to the array. If I found a valid one here, defined as a valid resolution value here, then I'm going to add that to my protocol array, which I set up here. So input protocols, that's what I called it. I suppose I need something to keep the current position in there as well. Let's just have a uint in, say, number of protocols. So the number that's been found so far started at zero. And whenever I find one, I'll just increment that. So if I found one, add valid protocol to, to array. So we have input protocols. That'll be number protocols. And we'll increment it after because we can do a zero-based lookup for that later. That'll make it easy. And to make this a little bit easier, I'll just do a, a compound literal here. So input protocol, so it's sort of like casting the struct. And then I don't have to label these, but I will anyway. Named it wait event type and SPP or APP. So 
The wait event is going to be the protocol that we're adding, which is an offset and an array. And dereferenced for the wait for input. We'll put that there. The type is going to be for this one. It's not the console in, it's the SPP. So we'll do the SPP type. And the last one is where we fill out the SPP or the APP. So that will be just the pointer within the array. There we go. So I'll add that. Now that I'm doing this, I'm thinking if I want it to work for the console input as well as these other things, I need to add that in as well. So I'll add that in first here. So say first input will be on in for the keyboard. So instead of wait for input here, I'll just do the console in. There's only one console in, but it will work for multiple keyboards. So I can test that as well. But I, I've done that before and it did work. So console in would be wait for key. And then the type is going to be CN and SPP or APP doesn't matter. They're not going to be filled out. So we'll just do null for that. That'll add that in as the first one. And then any valid simple pointer protocol will add that in after. And we'll have the total number contained within num protocols here. So after all of this other stuff, where I go to the event loop, instead of only having two hard-coded events, we'll have num protocol hard-coded events. If we don't want to use VLAs here, like num protocols, which isn't really going to be bad, but if we don't want to use that, again, I can just make it the same as the total number of events, potentially. But I can see if this works with VLAs. I don't like using them, but right now, maybe it's not too bad. So I'll do this outside of the loop, because it's going to be sort of static here. And let's say we just do that to start off with. So I'll have a for loop to fill out the events first. We'll say fill out event queue or event list first. So for all the protocols that we've found, I want to fill that out so we can fill out events. And that will be whatever the current offset within the protocols for the wait event will be. So input protocols i dot wait events. Because all these are going to be wait events. And they'll be used when I'm calling wait for event here. So instead of two, we have a potential number of the number of protocols. We have the events that we just filled out, and we have an index into there that's returned when it finds one after we've waited. So instead of having a hard-coded index, we can make it a little bit more dynamic here. And we'll say if the offset for that index within the protocols that we found, that array there, if the type, if I'm going to do like a console input, we can only have one console input, but that's fine. But if the offset here is cn for console in, then I know I got a key press, and I can just read from the singular console in because we only have one. So that'll be all right. And then instead of doing index one, we can do something similar here, where if the offset into that array, if the type for that is simple pointer protocol, then we know we found the simple pointer protocol. An event for that, that is. A mouse event, and then we can do everything else pretty much the same, except SPP will be different. Let's say instead of that, because that's shadowed for the array, let's say I have something like uh, not protocol GUI ID and just want that. Let's say I have active or, or current or something, simple pointer protocol. I'll say active, I think that's fairly descriptive here. And I copied all of, all of that to the array, so I can say whatever one we have is going to be the index, and I'll just take the SPP for that. Because I just copied the pointer into there, and that's a pointer that's copied there. Okay, then we can get the state and just change the name from SPP to active SPP. And that'll get the state for that simple pointer protocol instance. So if you have multiple mice, this would get the state and use the one for the mouse that you moved that it got the event from. So the touchpad would be its own simple pointer protocol and you're getting the state for that one specifically. And if you had a USB mouse plugged in at the same time and you move the mouse, it would have its own pointer protocol which would be separate from the touchpads and you'd have a separate state for that and separate values where the mouse was moving. 
So this, this is more dynamic. It works for more than one thing at a time if I do the events in the input loop in this way. I'm not going to say whether it's better, but <laughs> it at least allows multiple things working at once, which is pretty cool in practice. So wherever I have SPP, I just want to change that, and the compiler will warn me if I missed any place anyway. But I think it's only those places where I'm getting the state. And has no member named that. It does, though. Union initializer was bad. Okay. Well, I did that wrong, probably. <laughs> That's fair. All right. What did I mess up? Qualifier list. That is in the... That's in the header as well. I need to fix that. Okay. I don't know what I did differently there, to be honest with you. But I can check the initializers and other things around it, so that's that'll be okay. Expansion of this. Union has no members. Okay, 744. The union has members, they're here. All right, I will find out. Because I don't know at the moment what is wrong with these definitions because they all look the same to me. So I'm going to find out what that is and I'll be back in a second. <laughs> okay, I'm dumb. I can't read. <laughs> these these two things in the union for the protocols have GUID and that's not, that's not correct. <laughs> the GUID values are fine but the GUID is not a pointer type that I can use. I can set it equal to an EFI GUID type, but anyway, that was the issue there. Those, those things caused a lot of the other errors. That was the only issue. And yeah, this is why I don't like variable arrays on the stack, because that's not going to work, so I'll change that. Okay. So if, this, if the maximum here can be 11, I'll just do 11, and we'll probably use a lot less wherever my input loop is that I lost, this, yeah, I'll just do 11. I'll do same number of elements as input protocols, same max, the same maximum number of elements there. And then I just have unused variables I'll use in a bit. And I should have no changes here. I should just be able to use the mouse. And while I'm doing this, press escape and it'll go back. So I can simultaneously use the keyboard and the mouse, but using different sort of events here. And now I will add in the absolute pointer protocol code, and then I'll test that out. So all I have for that is this stuff up here. All right, so let's do something similar for this stuff. But after the absolute, maybe I could put it into a separate separate function or something, but that's all right. So let's find all the absolute pointer protocols with the handle buffer. Let's reset the variables here. Num handles will say zero. Handle buffer is going to be null, but if I was previously using that, then I probably want to free that, which I have at the bottom here. Yeah, free memory. Let's free that. Before I set it to null. And this will work because I'm not using the handles. I did open the protocol that was on that handle, so maybe I should use closed protocol actually. But anyway, I got the protocol from the handle. I don't need the handle anymore. I already have the protocol within this variable. The memory was filled out by calling this, so that's okay. We can close it here and then reuse the same buffer for something else. If we couldn't get it, then I'll say, cannot locate absolute pointer protocol. I'll probably just go on instead of returning the status. That'll be all right. If I can't find the simple pointer protocol, maybe we don't have a mouse, but we do have a touch screen, so I'm going to remove that return here as well. Because I'm still going to add these things. I'll set found mode to false as well. Okay, so if I'm doing it like that, these things aren't dependent on the SPP. The events are. I'll just return, like after this point, I suppose, if we don't have anything that we found. I'll do that. So if the number of protocols is zero, we didn't find anything. In that case, I will return. 
if I success or failure or something. I guess failure is probably all right. Is that something I have in there? No. Uh, one. One is okay. That's an error condition, I guess. It's not EFI success. Let's say we have an error condition here. X is not. I don't have a status. But I'll just say, could not find any simple or absolute pointer protocols. Okay, then we'll return. I'll just get a key. And then we'll return. Okay, but before that point, let's get the absolute pointer protocols. I'll do that similarly to this. I'll just grab that code there. I just saw something I needed to take care of as well, but let me put that there first. If I couldn't find a valid mode, we may still have a touchscreen, but not a mouse. So I'm going to take this code and remove it. Remove a few lines. If we couldn't find a valid mode, we may still have a touchscreen for the absolute pointer or a digitizer. So I don't care that we didn't find anything there. And similarly for the absolute pointer protocol, if we don't have a touchscreen or a digitizer, we may have a mouse. And that's not really a failure condition. We don't want to return for that. If we didn't find anything, I will return. But we could have found one or the other, at least. So, okay. So where I'm getting the number of handles, I got a buffer for the APP, which I need to change here. Absolute pointer protocol GUID. If we get that, then we can do some stuff here. Let's say... It'd be pretty similar because I'm using arrays for both. I would just change all these SPPs to APPs, which is going to be confusing if I miss one somewhere from a typo. We could not open it. I guess, well, no, I don't want to return if we couldn't open it. I'll continue in this case. Let me do that in the above one here as well. Because maybe we can try the other ones. And we'll call the reset similarly as the other. I'll do extended verification, so it may take a little bit longer, but that's all right. And I'll print some different info here. So we won't have a resolution X, Y, and Z value. We'll have... Just open the other one here. Absolute pointer. We'll have a mode, and we'll have absolute min and max. Let's have this. I'll just say min, min xyz and max xyz and attributes. So max x percent u, y percent u, z percent u, and attributes. And attributes are defined as bits, and I have a, a binary thing for that. I'll do percent, uh, percent b for that, yeah. And we'll put a new line. Okay, so we'll have I, that'll be that. And we'll have the absolute minimum X, minimum Y, and minimum Z. And then we'll have the max X, Y, and Z. Maz, max, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And then the attributes. Okay. So how do I know if it's valid? I'll do a similar check just to see if we have an X value that's below this 65536 max. So if the absolute max X is below that, I'm counting that as a valid mode. We found at least one. I did set that as false up there. Okay. And I'm not stopping when we get a valid one. I'm just going on regardless. So I'll change that text. Okay. So we print the info for it. We say we fill this out. So what protocol are we going to use? We're going to use the absolute protocols input. It'll be type APP. And we'll fill out the APP instead of the SPP. Same PP a lot. That's all right. <laughs> just childish. Um... This is for the initial mouse cursor, that's fine. All that stuff's fine. The event loop, I will now add in the other one. That will be added automatically. From this, it's sort of dynamic. 
in that case, we don't have to specify that. We will have to specify a case here. I could do a switch case, but if I want to break early, like stuff like this, I don't want to add another variable to break out again. Or I could do a go to or something. But that's fine. It'll be a little simpler, I think. Then the simple pointer protocols will do that. Handle absolute pointer protocol. That'll be APP. So how do I do that? We can do stuff like we did here. We can get the state. And we'll have absolute pointer state instead. And we'll have absolute pointer protocol. We'll have the active one that we found here in case there's multiple. I have the APP instead of the SPP value. And we'll get the state for that. All right. So if we got the state, I'll open this up again. The mode values we don't care for, these we don't care for. Reset state we do. So we have a current X, Y, and Z. Now these values can be and probably will be different from your screen resolution. But I'll just go ahead and do this first, I suppose, and we can see that and then work to fix that. So the current X, Y, and Z... I guess I can do similar stuff I had up here, erase text before printing. And we'll just, I don't need to do this. I will do a, a sort of ratio of, of values in a bit, but we won't need to do any sort of delta from the current position and make sure we move some amount. I can just print where we're at and move the mouse. That's what I will do. And I'll change this text and stuff in a bit. Save the frame, save the frame buffer data, move the mouse and draw the cursor. That's all I will do. Except we'll have current XYZ and active button values. We'll say instead of mouse, we'll say pointer, I guess. Pointer X position, Y position, Z position. These are uints. And we probably won't have a Z position, but I'll do that anyway. Instead of left or right button, we'll have active buttons. I'll just say, I don't know, buttons, I guess. That's that's fine. And again, these will, these will have bit values, so we'll make it binary for bits. We'll erase the text first. That'll be all right. Instead of cursor X and Y, we'll have the state, and it'll be state current X, and state current Y, state current Z, and then state active buttons. So it's a little simpler here. This will be print, uh, print state values, I guess. Print state values. Save the frame buffer first, then we'll move it. Cursor X and Y are shared between the simple and absolute pointer protocols. That's fine. So we can move the mouse cursor with the touchscreen or with any mouse that's connected. Instead of adding a value, though, we're setting a direct value from the state. We'll say current X and current Y. And I'm going to change how this is calculated in a bit as well but we can keep the rest of this the same. So in, in a basic form, which I'm, which I'm not fixing, it'll be a little buggy, but in a basic form, it is a lot simpler because you don't have to calculate a delta from your current position. You're just setting the current position. So it's a lot easier because it gives you the direct values to use. These values won't correspond necessarily one-to-one -to, -one to the screen size, but that's all right. So to be able to check this, uh, simple pointer mode has no value. Well, to be able to check it, I need to actually use the right values. 856, that's 11 down. Print initial, oh, APP mode info. It would help if I use the right values here. This is where I'm getting the handle buffer loop, by the way. It would help if I use the right thing, APP instead of SPP. I don't think I missed any other part. There we go. So nothing's going to happen here because I only have a simple pointer protocol. Therefore, I cannot find any valid APP mode. But we do have an example one here, which is, you know, invalid, just like the initial SPP as well. So everything, the max or 65536, I didn't find a valid mode. I'll put a new line in here as well. That would probably be good. I can put a new line first before this stuff, probably. 
because it'll print one out there, or I can just add one here initially. Yeah, there we go. Okay, but I need a build of OBMF that includes the absolute pointer protocol, and my issues with that the other day when building is that however the EDK2 repo has things set up, the simple pointer protocol or the absolute pointer protocol sort of overwrite or set the USB IO functions and, and synchronous transmissions and things. I don't know if there's a way to have both work at once for a device because they both overwrite the USB mouse device. So the communications to a USB mouse can only work for OVMF, not on hardware, it's fine, but for OVMF and QEMU emulation, either the simple or the absolute protocol is active, not both. If you build with both, I've found that simple pointer protocol takes priority and it sort of overwrites anything that the absolute pointer said. So to counteract that, I'll probably have to provide two BIOS values which I don't have OVMF in there, do I? I think I just called it BIOS. Yeah, BIOS64.bin. I'll have to provide two of these, one for the simple pointer protocol, so maybe I'll call it SPP, and one for the absolute pointer. Or I can include one with both, but you'll only see the simple pointer protocol. So, you know, oh well. <laughs> that's, not, that's not really great. And one way to check that, because I haven't shown this before, one way to check that is... If I launch it without an EFI application, it'll just run the EFI shell. So, well, if I if I launch it with a, a disk image that doesn't include an EFI application. So let me just run that so it's not in there. So we have the EFI shell, right? And you can press help and get a list of commands and page up and down will show that. You can, you, there is a devices command here, which lists devices, and there's DH, with, which lists device handles. So that's what I use to sort of check if it's going to even work within an EFI application. So I look at the devices, it enumerates all of these things that it can see. I have a PS2 keyboard, I have a serial port, I have a generic USB mouse. I don't have an absolute pointer, which would have a different name. I have a simple pointer. We can also see that with DH-P. If we put something without the protocol sort of suffix on it, so if we just say simple pointer, we can see all of those instances for device handles by default here in emulation. So the, the 65 there just has example ones, I guess, or it's like that invalid one with the 65536 values. And the A8 here is the actual one at the USB I.O. device path. But I know I don't have an absolute pointer because it doesn't show up. We just have the 65 there. So that's that's disappointing, but it's it's life. So I should have stuff in my email here. I was looking at Mike filters because I added a noise gate, so hopefully it doesn't degrade the quality too much. If I had header files to look at, OVMF builds, I'm going to get. This has both, but it does not work, so I need absolute pointer, but without simple pointer, let me just grab that. And if I show anything bad, then I will just not show it on here. But <laughs> so OVMF, let's just put that here, and I'm going to rename that. So let's say bio 64 I'll say app.bin. I didn't want to remove that. I wanted to move that. I don't have that anymore. Okay, well, good thing I did a copy. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I'll move that so that we can rename it. The bio 64 absolute pointer protocol is what I'm meaning that to be, so I'm just going to change QEMU to use that instead. I'm going to put this at the bottom, comment it out. And we'll say we used that. So now, if I launch QEMU, we should have the absolute pointer protocol for a USB mouse, but not the simple pointer protocol. So if I look at devices, I have generic USB mouse absolute pointer as A8. Instead of before, it was just generic USB mouse. And if I look at the simple pointer protocol, we don't have the other one. We don't have the A8 because it's not there. But if I look at absolute pointer, we see the USB I.O. device path is for absolute pointer now. And that is what I meant by one overwrites the other when you build. If you build with both, absolute pointer still doesn't show up. It only has the simple pointer, which is unfortunate. All right, so if I want that to be back, I'll copy the boot sector there, write GPT, and then now if I run it, 
Now if I run it, we should have the absolute pointer here. So zero is that one, one. I guess I don't need a new line for that. But now we don't have any simple, we only have absolute. And this is interesting. I don't know if something in the real world works, like a pin or something where you're not pressing on the screen, if it would move the, the arrow like this. But if I press the left mouse button, we get a one. The right mouse button, we get a two. Both together, I get a three. So you can kind of test pin buttons and stuff like that, I suppose. But it works similarly to the simple pointer protocol. Uh, but anyway, we have both built in. It's just an emulation. You can use one or the other. But on hardware, we should be able to use both at once. So I'll do that. I do want to... I do want to fix that sort of new line stuff because that kind of messes with me visually. I just don't like it. It, it irks me a bit. So I don't want to print a new line every time we have that. I just want to print one first before we get all this stuff. I'll just do that here. We'll just do that. So I'll say separate SPP and APP info visually. Okay, so now I just, I just wanted to group those two together, right? Okay. So I will test this on hardware, so I'll be back in a second once I get that set up, because I don't have it set up right now for recording <laughs> my phone and all. Uh, so let me do that. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, I have the laptop set up, phone recording, I got the data written to USB. Unfortunately, Bluetooth and other things are finicky, so I have one mouse, I have a USB mouse that I'm going to plug into to prove that I can do touchpad and mouse at the same time, but it's a Dell laptop that doesn't have USB-A ports, so again, I have an adapter, and then that's now connected to my mouse. <laughs> so I have to start OBS recording, and then unplug the mouse and plug it in to the laptop on the side here. So it's on the right side out of frame right here. Can I show that? It's on the, on the side. That's the USB, and that's the, the mouse. All right. So let's turn this sucker on and test it. Maybe next time I won't have cold hands, but you know, stuff happens. Just get a little bit better, better focus, and we'll do this, and I'll go to the mouse. Okay, so it takes, you know, about maybe a third of a second because it has to go through extended verification on the resets, which just makes sure things work better. But you can see we have two sort of valid simple pointer protocols and one valid absolute pointer protocol all running at the same time with the keyboard. So simple pointer protocol one I've found is for my, my USB mouse, my Logitech G502, whatever this is. And it is the eight, sort of the eight X and Y values at once. And I'll try to move that. It's a little, <laughs> I can't look at the OBS preview cause it lags. So it's weird. But on my laptop, this is all perfectly fine. So I can move up, down, left, right. Again, it's kind of perpendicular to where I'm sitting. So it's a little awkward, but it's not like stuttery like it was last time, which is good. So that's that. And then my touchpad is the four resolution and I can move that as well. So I can move them both at the same time as well. And the mouse will go like real crazy, but you can do both at once, which is nice. You can use either or that you want, switch between the mouse that I'm doing and the touchpad. And stuff kind of just works. So the absolute pointer protocol for this is the touch screen. So if I touch it, it'll move. That's at the bottom. So, and this, this you'll see is why I need to fix the values because you can see the max X for the absolute pointer is 3408 and the Y is 1920, which is weird because my screen is 1920 by 1080. So from what I can gather and from what I've been told, this might be for DPI values. It might be for a large virtual screen and calculating, let's say, acceleration or, or movements and things. But basically, the closer to the top left or zero, zero, the origin point, the more one to one this would be by default. So if I go to the top left, it's fine. And it'll basically follow my finger reasonably well, but it'll start going further and further and further and further and further till we get to the bottom right. And also, this might stick and not go all the way to the top or the bottom, depending on where the values lie. 
But anyway, so it does that. So it doesn't, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but it is fairly accurate, you know, other than that. But I can go ahead and fix that pretty easily, so I will do so. But those work, and the keyboard also works at the same time. If I plugged in my keyboard, which I guess I could test that as well, there are hot plug events, so let me test that as well. So if I unplug the mouse from the adapter, and I need an external keyboard, I guess I can show, though, that this does support USB hot plugging, so I only have one simple pointer protocol for the touchpad now. But let me test plugging in a USB keyboard just to check that two keyboards will work at the same time. Okay, I got my old full fat Leopold here. So the UEFI spec does define USB hot plug events. It doesn't really say like what that affects. I guess you could, it, when a device is plugged or unplugged, the firmware enumerates the bus. And if it detects a connect change event or a disconnect change event, if I remember right, then it will add and remove some things regarding these USB devices. So you can hot plug them. But anyway, I have the keyboard plugged in now. So I can use that to navigate the menu, or I can use the USB to navigate the menu. So I just wanted to show that, you know, they both work at the same time. It's just for the simple pointer protocol and absolute pointer protocol, they have separate protocol instances for a keyboard there's only one console input, really, and they both sort of get routed to that one. But you can use the keyboard, both of them, you know, at the same time. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'll press escape and log off that. So let me fix the absolute pointer protocol mouse movement, and I'll do that. All right, so I want to fix the absolute pointer protocol positioning between the absolute pointer position in the sort of GOP screen resolution position. And one way I can test that in just emulation here is if I don't do anything, I haven't changed anything, but I have the absolute pointer protocol going. If I'm in full screen or in regular screen, I cannot move to the right edge of the screen. And that's because for this QEMU version, the maximum X and Y values for the absolute pointer protocol are 1024. 1024 is less than my screen resolution width of 1920, so I can't go to the right. I physically can't. If I'm in a window, you know, it's more prominent here. So I know that it doesn't work from that as well. I just didn't show that before. So I go to my test mouse function. How do I change that? Well, I know how big the screen or the virtual screen or the, let's say, the area covered by the absolute pointer is. I know how big that is with these absolute min and max XYZ values. And I know how big my screen is from the GOP resolution, which I got initially in this function from up here somewhere, <laughs> from this locate protocol here. And I filled out the info in the mode info struct and the size of that struct there. So if I have those two, I can get a ratio between them to say if you move one unit or one pixel on screen, that should move however many other units or pixels for the absolute pointer protocol. So it's actually pretty easy, except I don't remember at the moment if it's the GOP over the APP or the APP over the GOP, but I'll figure out if that's wrong pretty easily. So I'm going to get that where I get the input and the input loop for the absolute pointer protocol. When I move the cursor here, Let's get a ratio of GOP screen resolution to APP position or area, or we'll say max values. And this will be used to translate the APP position to the correct on screen GOP position, we'll say. So I'm going to use floating point values for this as well because I'm going to be using ra ratios here. So let's say X and Y, maybe X ratio, I'll say APP ratio to make a little bit more sense. And I have the mode info uh, horizontal resolution for X, and I'm going to divide that by, this is an integer, I believe, so I'm going to make that a float. I'm going to divide that by another float value, because it'll be a UNT64, and that'll be whatever our absolute maximum is, which is going to be APP, whatever one we're currently on, which is the active one, 
the mode within that dereferenced. And I want, what do I want from that? <laughs> I think the absolute max is what I'm going to use because the min I just have zero. So we'll say max x for that. And I'll just do it like, like this. And I'm going to have one for y as well, except that'll be the vertical resolution. Vertical instead of horizontal and the max y instead of max x. Okay. So what do I do with that? When I get the current position, what I can do is multiply by that ratio. And that will translate, you know, if we move so many, so many units in the x or y, I need to multiply that to get so many units that I should move visually on the screen according to our screen resolution and the amount that we can move for the absolute pointer protocol. If I multiply these two, that'll be all right. The current x is going to be uint. So this is going to be a float. I'll make this a float. So the value is a float. And then we'll say these are int values. So I'll just cast that. Maybe I'll just double up on this just to make sure. And we'll see if that fixes that or not. But that should effect effectively translate the position more correctly. So now I'm full screen. And if I go all the way to the right, I can go all the way to the right now. And all the way to the top and the bottom. So I'll check all the corners. Bottom right, upper right, upper left, bottom left. So we're good. And that also works in the window here. So that was actually really easy. It doesn't say to do that in the spec, and I couldn't really find much info on the absolute pointer protocol online, but it's actually pretty easy to, you know, fix that positioning. So I will test that on hardware again. Let me do that. I'll connect my phone. Ignore the dust. I'm gonna, <laughs> I will clean that up. It's just I had the books and stuff over there, so I hadn't cleaned underneath. But we'll set this back up. Let me... Let me actually make the USB real quick. Okay, got the USB, gonna plug it in. I guess I'll plug my mouse in just to be sure that we can use them both at the same time still. Okay. F12, pressing so many times. Eventually it'll load. Maybe I pressed it too many times. <laughs> USB device enumeration. Did I break booting my laptop? I might have. Oh, there we go. It just took its sweet time. It took its sweet time making sure it wasn't broken. I was probably interrupting device enumeration with pressing F12. But that's all right. Okay. So touchpad still works. Mouse still works. All right. The screen. Now, when I press a point on here, it actually follows directly because I'm getting that ratio and everything now. If I move, I can move in the upper right, move it down to the lower right, or sorry, the upper left, lower left. I can move to the, well, you can't see that, can you? And I plug my mouse in, but I can't move my head. Uh, <laughs> this is great. There you go. You see, it's in the lower, the lower right there. We're doing it live, O'Reilly style. And we'll put this up there, and it's in the upper right. So with that, we get the right ratios and everything, and you can see a little mouse trail there. And the absolute pointer protocol works. You will see that the one is set for the buttons, that sort of bit. And that shows that there is a sort of pressure-sensitive touch here. In QEMU and emulation, it doesn't set that when you just move the mouse, because it has, you know, weird emulation. But if you touch the screen, it says, hey, there's some amount of capacitance or pressure being used there. So that's cool. It doesn't record the pressure in the Z-Parm, because that's still zero, and the attributes are zero. But that's there. So hopefully that shows, you know, running multiple inputs at the same time. That's all I want to really do for simple and absolute pointer protocols. I just wanted to show that that worked, and because I was asked to make that work. <laughs> so anyway... Not sure exactly where I want to go from here. Maybe sort of uh, loading and reading files like I think I said I was going to do. So I might do that. Load and read files, make a tiny sample kernel that will just maybe draw to a frame buffer that's passed into it. 
So making a, a primitive PE loader or ELF loader for a dynamic executable so we don't have to link at a specific address or anything. And reading files from the ESP and from another partition on the disk image, the data partition, where we will add a file that will be a kernel binary to run, we'll say. And we can go on from there, maybe block IO protocols to write our disk image to a different disk on your guest machine, we'll say. So my laptop, I can overwrite the hard drive and get rid of my, my precious OS setup that I have on there that I'll have to redo later. But anyway, I can write sort of an installer for that. And we can go from there. Barring that, thank you for watching this episode. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Let me go let me go celebrate with a nice brewski, huh? And get this stuff off the screen. Okay, input. That is enough of an accomplishment on this cold almost winter night to crack one open with the boys. For a nice spiced winter ale. And we can enjoy. I don't know, celebrating a milestone in a UEFI development, we'll say. So, I'm not going to give you an impromptu beer review, even though I almost thought about doing it. But we'll get a nice brewski on there. So, thank you for watching, greatly appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.